Why do we need to do this rigmarole jumping around through hoops? It's very clear. What's this all about? Why have I been called up again? Don't you realize that it's dinner time for li little baby Ida? When my son Billy is empty, he's fierier than a pea, fiercer than a pack of wolves. Exploited by the police, we were like miserable dogs, forced to bear with our false witness. And when cast from this courtroom myself, I became a ruined man in a thrice. A worthless, withered antique. Nothing more have I to say. The sun has set on this Ratsute shop owner's existence. Are you about to commit seppuku? But that as it may, Kurikuta, something has come to light that requires your clarification. As far as your Ratsute memory serves, have you e Okay? Oh, that's why you don't bring a knife to court. That, that, that's the one, the very one, the very exact one that is. The resplendent, splendir, splendiferous holy treasure that my rusty bones managed to misplace that fateful day. It can't be. Hmm, as I thought. Young man, enlighten me this discrepant old fool put me out of my misery. Where, where was my treasure? Where was it dropped? Um, I'm not sure if it was dropped anywhere. We found your coin sandwiched between, you know, beef steak and its plate soaking in the seasoned, seasoned meat juices. Sandwich. Soaking. Seriously. Clearly it couldn't have fallen there by accident. Which means somebody must have hidden it there on purpose. Somebody concealed my holy treasure between a slab of meat and a metal plate. Who would do such a thing? Such an inconscionable whole thing. Yeah. Um, I know who. Excuse me. Could I say something? Yes, of course. Proceed, Inspector Hosanaga. I mentioned this earlier on the trial, but I was working undercover in the restaurant in order to investigate another case. Ah, uh, yes, that's right, the secret undercover operation. La Carnaval is a high-class Western cuisine restaurant and attracts wealthy diners, including many foreigners. Recently, there's been a run of similar executed thefts targeted in the restaurant's rich clientele. A number of such incidents have been reported to the police bureau. Uh-huh. Wicked crimes indeed. We wanted to nip the case in the bud quickly, especially with so many foreigners being infected. So that's why you were sent to undercover, is it? Yes, I took the job of a waiter at the restaurant in order to flush out the criminal. It seems likely that this Koban incident is the work of the same thief. Hmm. So, unbeknownst to us, there was a master thief at the work in the restaurant on a regular basis. The place was already the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part, but... The identity of the person who stole and hid Kurdus Koban is all too clear. What? What? There's one person you were near the entire time. I think the court would like to hear the defense's view on this matter. Tell us who the did the despicable scoundrel that stole the Kudan's Koban hidden under the stake. Take that! Obviously, can only be you, Sergeant Ise Enosa. What? How? How dare you, 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 you monster! Monster! I stole that Koban, did I? I'm a master thief of La Carnaval, am I? You're seriously accusing me of these crimes, cadet. But it wasn't me, it was Ido. Ido's the mastermind behind all this. You're blaming the baby. <laughs> you
You would put the blame for your crimes onto your own son, an innocent little baby. It's you who's the monster, Sergeant Nosa. Clip the cop, clip the cop, clip the cop. <laughs> oh, is it the baby? Nippon Imperial Army Sergeant knows I'm preparing to stand down out in the Supreme Court, sir. Do any of you know of the extraordinary low wages the Nepal and Imperial Army pay us so it's expected to keep, it, keep our country safe? I understand that the temporary increase in taxation owing to the recent ended conflicts remain in place. And I have heard it's hard for lowering rank officers to make a living, yes. All I want is to put hot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant. The place is heaving with money. Every three days I go there and do a reconnaissance for a target. And I enjoy chomping my way through a good state at eat a yeah, steak at the same time. You went to an expensive restaurant to scope out targets to steal from. Potentially wasting money. <laughs> Sounds like he doesn't bother with the knife and the fork even, which is worrying, believe, worryingly believable. And your target that day was the old man and his coat on. Yes, sir. He, he was an easy mark. I, I slipped the coin into my pocket without any trouble at all. Hmm? A veritable phantom thief you are. I was all too set to leave the steak I was halfway through devouring when it happened. Yes, when the professor was shot, I knew that if the police con conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. I do too. So I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could on the double. I slipped it under the stake, hoping I'd be able to re I know the word. But I'm also forgetting how to pronounce it. Rendezvous with it? Rendezvous? That didn't seem right. English is stupid! <laughs> Again at a later date. This is ridiculous. Perhaps you could carry on with a certain little prodding in your own time. Well, Miss Brett. Oh, of course, your lady, of course. How rude of us. I'm quite sure there's no need to detain you any longer at all. May the esteemed gentlewoman please be excused, Your Excellency. You should be groveling on the floor where you actually are acting like. Hmm. Indeed. Nope! That's not her plate! That's not the plate! The death of the Gomon was clearly perpetrated this since baby sandaled the sergeant, so it would be certain to appear to be unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. False! Of course it is. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of such a nice idea astounds me. Nonsense, is it? Uh, um, well, ugh. And as we're picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife or fork, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Literally say that was your plate and not the victim, or not hers, rather. Very well, now that all the questions concerning this witness testimony have been answered, I see no further justification for detaining her. No? Are y'all stupid? 
Thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. D and good day. I believe her character shows she probably would have said something completely different. You know, Skate, what's the matter with you? This is no time for daydreaming. Oh, no, it's just something about Miss Brett's parting words there got me thinking. I can't quite work out what exactly, but something she said jarred with me. I feel like there was a contradiction in there somewhere, something that didn't quite add up. That's the case, don't just stand there thinking, make your voice heard. Sorry? You can think later, but if you don't call out now, it'd be too late. The trial will be over. Hold it! Wait, Miss Brett? What is it now? I'm afraid just one last time. There's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like you to explain the contradiction in your parting words from just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? I'm what contradiction? What new student nonsense is this? Well, your parting words... What parting words are you talking about, Ryuzuke? Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense, it's pure madness. Yes, I'm right. What she said there exposes the undeniable contradiction. I'm going to need to see evidence, counsel. Unless words truly are contradictory, where is the evidence to prove it? Would it be this? photographic print of the scene taken immediately after the incident occurred. What's interesting is the plate of steak that you see on the victim's table. Say, Mercer, Miss Brett had been eating before the professor was killed, yes. More accurately, Your Excellency, the steak that was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed. And now you're splitting hairs. Green Muskate. Not true. Doesn't see. Doesn't something about the steak strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural? What on earth do you mean? It's extremely obvious. I'm talking about the shape of the edge where it's been eaten. I see you've noticed it too, Miss Brett. Notice what exactly, Council? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed. No Englishman could ever contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. Of course she did. She's a refined English woman, English gentlewoman herself. Take a good look at that this steak, in particular, the edge where it's been eaten. As you can see, there's clearly defined barbaric teeth marks there. Yeah. It looks like Miss Barrett's realized something. So, the witness, as she claims, wouldn't contemplate eating without using a knife and fork. There shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. Oh, okay, so that's the real. She pulled a switch. <laughs> but, what's your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was ravenous. Sweating again. Oh, um, whatever you say, dear lady. You still suck them nerves. <laughs> As I said, I really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. Of course, of course. This will be all over in the blink of an eye. Rest assured, I'm about to put this rookie in its place. Just leave everything. I've heard enough. You irritating little speckled samurai relic. Dear lady. What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have we ruffled your feathers? Clearly the witness knows what this means. Surely she realized the catastrophic implication these teeth marks in the stake have for her. Rinosuke, do you know where you're going with all this? Yes, now at last it's all come together. 
The mysterious teeth marks in the steak that had allegedly been eaten with the cut cutlery. The reason why the blood stains I know I saw somehow have been disappear have disappeared. It also explains why they didn't show in the photograph. And more importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all who shot Dr. Wilson that day. I said that these things marks in the stake are a little unnatural, as you point, would it, counsel? But what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Everything? Yes, I believe that these barbaric teeth marks in the stake here amount to conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Conclusive evidence, how many times have I heard that today? You wouldn't know the meaning of the phrase, typical Japanese empty hand, empty threats. You literally destroyed some of it, you... Mm. How can you be so sure? Oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it to the court long ago. Literally, the officer stole evidence. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Hasn't been. What? Just before, just because it hasn't been shown yet doesn't mean that the evidence does not exist. That's absurd. The trial has run several hours already and you say there's evidence yet to be brought forward. There can't be. I don't believe you have it. Hosanaga has it. I don't, but there's someone who does have it. Someone in this very courtroom. And if that person is willing to submit the piece of evidence I'm referring to, it will solve everything, every remaining mystery about this case. Very well, I have a feeling this will be my last request of the defense in this trial. Who p possesses the conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth about this whole affair? The man who took all the evidence from the crime scene. The answer is obvious, this is Buster Hosanaga. What? I, I have it? Why would you not, man? <laughs> yes. You you think I've been withholding conclusive evidence. That's ridiculous. No, 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 I'm not saying that. Everyone's attention has been focused on the stake with the teeth marks. Yes. Now, earlier this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa so told the court the following. I'd enjoyed chopping down on my way through a good steak. As well as attempting to steal Cory Kuka's coin, he told us he'd slipped it underneath the steak. Y you watch it, kid. I'm a superior officer. Sergeant Nosa, could you please confirm something for me? Was the steak that you put the coin under, in fact, your own steak? Ten Shun. Affirmative, of course. I might be a soldier in the Imperial Nippon Army, but still. I'm not brave enough to ask a foreign gentle lady if she'd mind me manhandling her meal to hide something in it. In other words, the stake that the detective submitted as evidence earlier was in fact the Sergeant Nosa's meal. But that makes no sense. That plate was taken from the victim's table. Yet the gentlewoman doesn't take bites of her steak, nor did she have the opportunity to steal the coin. Of course I didn't steal it. He even suggests that the thing would be an affront to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? The plates were swapped. Exactly. Surely you've not going to suggest that the sergeant switched the two steaks over. So the sergeant didn't, Miss Brett did. Okay, I can only take silence for so long. You did switch the plates. Well, after it happened, the, um... When I saw the civilian had been boarded right in front of my eyes like that, I panicked. I said before I made it with my stake and hit the coin underneath it, 
But then when the nader, waiter announced he was an undercover policeman, I thought I had it. He decided to investigate my slab of meat. Eat that be it. I'd be getting, getting my marching orders. Oh, so Nosa swapped them. So when the cadet here was arrested and taken off to the kitchen, I seized my chance. With my military precision and timing, I switched my steak with one of the foreign ladies' table. What? You can't have. I, I never saw you do such a thing. It was called Operation Lightning Bolt. There was no time for strategic planning. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what had to be done. Unbelievable. However, fear not, prosecutor son. What now? I swear on the brass buttons on my uniform, that's all I did, sir. All you did. That's plenty, yes. Sergeant. So, if Sergeant Nosa switched the plates over, it means he missed. He took Miss Brett's steak and the plate it was placed on back to his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Hosanaga? Yes. Early in Australia, you told the court this. You said that you had not only taken Miss Brett's steak after the incident, but also the sergeant's. To preserve evidence, you had taken both. Ah. That's correct. Then please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually the victim's plate at the precise moment he was shot. Or actually on the victim's table at the precise moment. Shut up! What could that possibly tell us now? I mean, a cold slab of tough meat? It can't have the slightest bearing on the case. It have the blood. You daft bitch. No, you're not really your way out of this out of it this time, lady. I beg your pardon? Surely you're not that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why the steak pan promises to prove such a problem for you, no? You're the ones who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defense asked to see the plate was to confirm something the defendant remembered seeing. Thinks he remembered seeing. I'm quite sure of what I saw, Miss Brett. On the side of the plate that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson, there was a clear splattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. And now we have the evidence to prove it. The plate you were eating from, Miss Brett. Frankly, she got lucky that this whole fucking switcheroo shit happened and wasn't self-orchestrated by herself, right? She might have saw it happen and thought, good for me. Let us not prolong this any further, Inspector. You will show the evidence to the court. Present the beef steak and the plate that was originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident. Yes, sir. Why didn't you just bring them both initially? Sorry for keeping you. Here is the other steak and its plate. And yep, there's definitely blood on it. And it's definitely been cut with a knife. The blood stain. It's clearly yes. visible. Look. Now this makes everything clear. The blood you can see on the side of the plate. Shows them the moment the victim was shot. He was facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it's impossible for Naruhoto to have shot the victim. Eh, it, it can't be. In fact, there's only one person who possibly could have shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. That's right, Miss Jezile Barrett. 
It's you. Oh, everyone left. Oh, the swan fell over. Outdone by a Japanese. <laughs> Me, by a Japanese schoolboy. No, no, no. Oh, it has a tie. I didn't realize it had a little bow on it. I also have a little hatchet. Its babies are falling out of the hat. It's a gun also gonna fall out of the hat as well. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> oh, little chicks! Still, what the fuck? <laughs> Please excuse my little outburst. I briefly lost my composure. That turned your bird hat alive and caused to drop babies, chicks from it. Okay. <laughs> Most unbecoming behavior for an English gentlewoman, forgive me. Well, Miss Brett. I think it's time you told the court what actually happened that day. The truth, this time. Gladly, Your Excellency. It was I who took the professor's life for using Kira. As you surmised, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you plan to kill the professor, knowing that no trace of poison would be found in his water. Because Kira is unheard of here in Japan. Yes. Of course I never intended to remain at the restaurant for long as I did. I only needed to see the professor take one sip of his water and it would all be over. I placed the steak I had ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone and leave immediately. However, before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Such a trifling matter, but the fact that you decided to come over to greet the professor meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in this chair such that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at that point. So I concocted a plan on the spur of the moment. A plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. I happened to know that the professor always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of the cure in my handbag. And now, my own pistol concealed under my skirt. Obviously. Under your skirt. So I was right, there were two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor. A place where you were sure I would notice it. And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun as I intended. And then, just as you bent down to pick it up... That's when you shot the professor with your own gun. Even though at that point, he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot causes a commotion, at which point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assume Umnarhoto was the culprit and apprehended him. 
I took him to the pantry that adjourned oh, into the kitchen and locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor in his chair around. Because of course, you needed to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson where he had picked the gun. So there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. misdemeanor. It's a little higher than a misdemeanor. Your Excellency. Yes. I wonder. Might I speak with you in private later? I wouldn't speak with her alone in private and don't drink the water. <gasps> I I shall call on you. Thank you. Good day then, everyone. What? I hope you can forgive me, Narahodo-san. Is she just gonna leave? <laughs> Confessed to murder? It would seem this trial has violently run its course. I presume the prosecution is in agreement. This this can't be. Takatu Uchi Aochi does not lose. Not like this. This this rookie student. You better start getting used to tough opposition. Ryunosuke Narahodo. What? Yes. This insult to the Auchi family name will never be forgiven. You've been very I conceited with age, counsel. But the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. What's with bringing the sword out now? This is kind of assault. And intimidation of opposing counsel. A thousand millennia may pass and still the Yachi clan will never measure up to the Naruhoto clan. Oof. Is that foreshadowing? I feel like this is past events. This is like future Phoenix Wright stuff actually also gonna happen. <laughs> this trial in the Supreme Court of Japan will, I believe, go down in history as the start of a new chapter for our country's judicial system. I don't feel like this is a good start. Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Rino Skehar, Arahoto, present and in an excellent case. I thank you, Your Excellency. The use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern methodology. After all, it's only been a few short decades since our country opened its doors to the wider world. But the Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring new methods of investigation and pr new procedures of justice. A new future of law awaits, but what it will look like, I cannot begin to imagine. That is for the young to pursue. Kazuma Aso Asogi. Yes. After this trial, you are set to embark on a journey for discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can, absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand. Your Excellency. His mission of the Avatar. Right? Airbender? I'm still on that. What was that about? Why do you look so grave all of a sudden? Ah, never mind. As for you, Ryunosuke Narahodo. Oh, yes? In you, I sense, how do I put it, unusual potential. 
I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that onwards. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find the defendant, Ryonosuke Naruhoto, not guilty. Okay. We still let the actual criminal just walk out of court. This court is now adjourned. Did Hosanaga arrest her? Like, what's going on there? 22nd November, 2.46 p.m. Supreme Court of the Judicator. Inner Defendants. Antechamber 5. I can't believe it. I can't believe what's happened. I made it. I defended myself. Made it through that horrendous trial. Ryunosuke. You finally pulled it off. Congratulations. Well, I couldn't have done it without you, Kazuma. No, it was a pleasure to watch you at work. So you owe me an extra large sukiyaki from the place it's on Yume University Street, don't forget. Good afternoon, all of your hard work certainly has paid off. Congratulations to both of you for proving Naruhoto san's innocence. Ah, uh, our trusty judicial assistant. You worked hard for that result too, you know. Oh no, I didn't do anything. Thank you so much. Yeah, they would have been dead in the water had you not just shown up. If we hadn't had that research report on Miss Brett's, I don't know how things would have turned out. Your kind words really should... Your kind words should really be for my father. I was simply doing as he asked. It was his idea for me to go to the university and investigate. Your father? Ah, uh, yes, of course. Nico Toba, alright? Forgive me for intruding on the court proceedings, Your Excellency. Susana Mi Nikotoba, judicial assistant. So. She's also Nikotoba. That doesn't work. Speaking of Nikotoba. Ah, there you are. I believe cry. Yeah, congratulations are in order. Can't speak normal words. Naruhoto, you did an excellent job. Thank you, Professor. Oh no, it is I who should be thanking you. After all, your efforts exposed the true Camille that took the life of my good friend. Good friend? Oh yes, you mentioned that before. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yuma University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Professor Mikotobe studied overseas himself. He went to study forensic medicine in Great Britain. Presumably, that's when you met Dr. Wilson. Exactly. In those days, we worked together in the same hospital. Oh, you worked together? I've never heard you mention that before. Well, it was a long time ago now. Besides... It's your turn, Asogi. Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world. In science, medicine, engineering, culture... And of course, in law. Watch and learn, my boy. See what's happening in the world's largest melting pot. I will. I'll learn all I can. I swear on this, the spirit of the Asogi clan. You're not taking that sword to Great Britain, are you? Of course I am. A Japanese man's katana is his soul. His blade shows me where I need to go and cuts down anything that's in my way. Yes, I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. That reminds me, what's happening to the woman? What's happened to the woman? The Jezal Barrett, I mean. After all, she's guilty of murder. Ah, yes, her. It's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? Surely she's going to face trial herself now. She's the true culprit, after all. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future, for Shanghai. What? Shanghai? 
Jess Alvarez will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. What? But why not? It's a matter of cons consular juris jurisdiction. Blech. Inspector Hosanaga. It's a hard fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must. But, but what's this all about? Consular jurisdiction? We cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. What? We can't try her? But then who? Who's gonna bring her to justice? A British consular court will hear her case, somewhere far away, where our voices can't be heard. But why is a consular court? Professor, I simply don't understand. But now consular courts were a thing of the past now. That we signed a friendship treaty. Yes, in normal circumstances, you're right. Then so long as it's not a serious incident of highly political nature in our respective governments. They can't invoke a consular court just like that. Oh, can't they? Yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our governments making secret agreements before about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. So Mar's Miss Brett can't be held accountable for her actions here in Japan. I'm afraid that is for the young student. Today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. There was never any danger of comeuppets for her. I don't believe it. The British Government Foreign Affairs Ministry has demanded that we hand over custody of Miss Brett. They're obviously taking this case of foreign student committing murder very seriously. But it's all going to change from now on. We can... We can make it change. This is a great time of great turmoil, this new era heralded by the start of the 20th century. One day, I have no doubt, that will, woman will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes, change is coming, and we're the ones driving it. Well, I think that's enough seriousness for now. This evening calls for a celebratory drink. Oh, Professor. You're right, this is no time for gloomy faces. We should be celebrating Ryunosuke's not guilty verdict. Let's start having some fun. In that case, may I suggest La Carnival? How about no? As the head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with ample food and drink. Um, you're a detective, Hosunaga-san, aren't you? Also, the fact that you're coughing on blood doesn't make me feel very safe in your stuff. Let's not worry about details for now. To La Carnival, will you accompany us, Professor? Of course, La Carnival's food is second to none. I really feel like we should go somewhere else. There was literally a murder committed there. By poison! I shall go and attend to the paperwork for Naruhota san's release. Oh, yes, thank you. Making her do the actual work behind the scenes, I guess. So Jezal Barrett won't be tried here. I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. Kazuma san. Kazuma. Yes, Ryanosuke? I just wanted to say thanks again, that's all. You really saved my skin today. I didn't do a thing. You were the lawyer there, weren't you? That defense was all your work. Your skills made the difference, though. One day, I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. I'm not so sure about that. To be honest, something kept occurring to me over and over again during that trial. I couldn't help thinking that maybe you're the one destined to become a great lawyer, not me. What? Come on, be serious. If I helped you today, it was only the right thing at the very start of the trial. 
But you have a natural talent for it. For being a defense lawyer, I mean. Oh no, not me. All this tense verbal combat, I never want to go through that ever again. I just, I just did what you told me to do. But that's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry? What do you mean that's the point? Listen, Rinkosuke. Do you know what the most crucial weapon in all that lawyer needs that is... Crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Um, knowledge of the law? No. The ability to believe. To believe? To believe what? A defense lawyer has to fight first clients, has to believe in them at all times. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it. I'm human, just like you. I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth. But you have to make the choice about what you believe in and stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can really be backed into a corner. But being able to remain faithful to what you chose to believe in, then, well, that's something that not anyone, that, that's not something anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. Hmm. Believing in your client. <sighs> Just look at today's trial. I have a student lawyer with his precious little... With the precious little real experience, but you never stopped believing in me. Well, I... You face seemingly hopeless situations time and again, but you never stopped knowing... Never stopped looking for the truth. In the end, you found it. Through your own efforts and because you never stopped believing in me. Thanks, Kazuma. There is something I want to ask you, actually, Ryanosuke. Well, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. It sounds serious. What is... Ah, you're still here, are you? Hosonaga? Wipe your face. Oh, Inspector Hosonaga. I've arranged some brick shots for us. Let's go. Thank you. We'll be right there. Let's pick up this conversation again later. We should be celebrating right now. Your first court... or victory. And your study tour to Great Britain, don't forget. Ah, yes. That too. Is it gonna hit? So my very first trial came to an end. Kazuma. Professor Mikotoba. Susato-san, who acted as my assistant. Inspector Hosonaga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still. It was because of the help and support of all these people that I managed to get through that trial. But more importantly, Cosmo hadn't yet managed to ask his favor of me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. Oh, that's an end to this court. It actually hit right kind of where I wanted it to, time-wise.